Right, let's uh, get started. And, uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Welcome to this uh, PLSA Policy Insights webinar on lifetime allowance uh, abolition. My name is James Walsh, I'm head of membership engagement here at the PLSA. Pleasure to welcome uh, you all. Uh, we've got 453 people registered uh, for this webinar, which uh, is a fantastic number and very nearly the most we've ever had. I think we had 471. Uh, for one during COVID when there was nothing else to do to speak to people online. So obviously a lot of interest in this topic. Um, we've got two excellent speakers to guide us through these issues. And I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves rather than have me do it. So uh, uh, Isabel, uh, I hope you're out there. Isabel, you can come in and uh, introduce yourself from HMRC. Hi, Thanks, James. Um, I'm hoping everyone can hear me. Um, hi, I'm Isabel. I am a policy advisor at HMRC. I'm working on the pensions team on the abolition of the LTA, and I'm currently the lead for comms and stakeholder engagement. Thanks, Isabel. That's great. And we've also got Tim Smith. Good morning, everyone. Tim Smith. I'm a professional support lawyer in the pensions team at Evershed Sutherland. And for my sins, spending a lot of time looking at the legislation around lifetime allowance abolition uh, and also helping clients get to grips with what's changing. Super. Thanks, Tim. We'll come back to you uh, a little bit later. So uh, the plan for the next 45, 43 minutes or so uh, is really very simple. Uh, Isabel's got a short presentation uh, to share with us uh, about what the changes are, um, timelines uh, and so on. Then we'll have a few minutes for questions to Isabel. Uh, then Tim is going to talk us through some of the legal and practical issues. And again, we'll have a few questions to Tim. And then more time for more questions uh, for the rest of our time. So you see the theme is lots of questions. So do put them in the Q&A box. Uh, and there's a facility to upvote. Terrible verb, but I think it's the one we've got. To upvote the questions you most like. And obviously, I'll, I'll try and focus more uh, uh, on, on, on those. So, so do do make your views known uh, there. We are going to circulate slides from today and also the recording. That will go around to everyone who's registered in uh, a day or two. Um, the recording will be able to watch um, online uh, later. So that's the intro for me. That's the plan. Uh, I'm going to turn to Isabel to talk us through uh, changes, timeline, the legislation, and so on. Isabel. Thanks, James. So, um. Yeah, here today primarily to talk about the principles of the new regime um, from the 6th of April and the abolition of the LTA, the legislation that delivers that and the timelines for implementation. So as I'm sure most of you will know, at spring budget 2023, uh, the government announced that they would be abolishing the LTA framework completely from pensions tax legislation from the 6th of April 2024. That was following the removal of the lifetime allowance charge from the 6th of April 2023. And the le legislation which delivers these changes was published in November as part of Finance Bill 2023-24. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, so the removal of the LTA from pension tax essentially means that there is no longer a lifetime limit on total tax relievable pension savings. However, in the absence of that limit, it is necessary to have new limits, new allowances uh, to limit the total amount of lump sums that individuals can receive free from income tax. So we have uh, two new allowances to do that. They are called the individual's lump sum allowance and the individual's lump sum and death benefit allowance. That means that BCEs, benefit crystallization events, the times at which members take pension benefits are being removed and they're being replaced with relevant benefit crystallization events, which are the payments of those lump sums and lump sum death benefits tested against the new allowances. There is also a third new allowance to limit tax-free transfers overseas for individuals. That's the overseas transfer allowance. Um, Obviously, we don't have a lot of time today, so I'm not going to go into huge detail about that, but um, there will be further guidance on that. There's some, some further guidance already published, um, and I can share some resource, resources with Geordie to, to circulate afterwards, uh, which will give you some more information on that. Can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, so what separates these new allowances from the LTA? Well, as I said, the LTA put a total limit on tax relievable pension savings over an individual's lifetime, and it was used up by all those events uh, called BCEs, which I've sort of summarized in the box beneath LTA. Any excess over that would have been taxed at an individual's 
marginal rate plus 25% LTA charge. If it was taken as a lump sum, it would have been a 55% LTA charge. Moving forward, the lump sum allowance will test benefits we often refer to as tax-free cash. So um, the PCLS, the UF Plus standalone lump sums. That is set at 268275, which is equivalent to 25% of the current standard lifetime allowance, which essentially means that we're maintaining the total amount of tax-free cash that an individual could have benefited from under the LTA system from April 24. Any excess over that will be taxed at marginal rate. You won't be able to take a PCLS over that, um, but I won't go into all of that detail. The lump sum and death benefit allowance will test those same lump sums. And in addition, it will test the serious ill health lump sum and lump sum death benefits, except uh, for one. Um, again, the excess over that will be taxed at marginal rate, and it's set at just over a million, equivalent to the current standard lifetime allowance, again, to ensure that nobody is put in a worse tax position following the removal of the lifetime allowance framework. For both uh, new allowances, where an individual holds a valid relevant protection, their allowance will be increased to reflect that. What I've put on the slides here just reflects sort of the standard position for most pension savers. Also, slightly contrary to the LTA, individuals will be able to take these lump sums, again, except for the PCLS, in excess of these limits. It's just that the limits will now dictate the tax treatment of that lump sum, as opposed to whether or not it can be paid. Could I have the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, so the legislation introduced in November as part of Finance Bill also introduced changes to the reporting requirements. So as far as possible, we did seek to build on the existing reporting requirements for schemes, both to members and to HMRC. Um, and the changes really ensure that what's being reported to members and to us now reflects the new allowances and not um, the old LTA percentages. So for instance, annual uh, statements produced for members should now reflect the monetary amount of an allowance or the allowances that an individual has used as opposed to the percentage of the lifetime allowance. And then we also introduced, and I know there's um, been a lot of questions around the transitional arrangements for the new regime. So for members who have already taken pe pension benefits uh, before 2024, uh, before the 6th of April 2024, and used up some of their LTA, how do we determine what their available allowance will be under the new regime? Um, broadly, there will be an assumption that 25% of whatever they've used of their LTA at the 6th of April was taken as tax-free lump sums. And so their available allowances will be reduced by 25%. We're sort of calling that uh, the standard transitional calculation, and that will provide the correct tax outcome for the majority of pension savers. There will then be an option for individuals to provide evidence to schemes uh, that they've taken less than that, and to be given a certificate should the scheme be satisfied that that evidence um, is sufficient uh, to show that they have taken less than that and to reflect the actual amount of their remaining allowances. Um, again, not really time to go, but we're having to answer questions on um, the further detail of, of those technical changes, but that does lead me on to implementation and timelines and what we're doing to support uh, the pensions interest industry to be ready from April 2024. Have the next slide, please. So as I'm sure you know, and I think I've, I've already mentioned, the legislation published in Finance Bill will be effective from April 24. Ministers have remained committed to abolishing the lifetime allowance entirely, entirely from pensions tax legislation by that date. Um, we are aware though, following industry feedback on the published legislation, and thank you to anyone on this call who's engaged with that, that some areas don't currently operate as intended. Um, I've put a couple probably of the key examples on the screen. That's the pension commencement excess lump sum and reportable event 24. Again, happy to take questions on those. Um, and there are also some more minor consequential changes uh, that need to be made. Because we knew that there was a chance that we would need to make some of these changes, the legislation published in Finance Bill included... <laughs> Ah, I think we may have just lost Isabel, the webinar host's greatest nightmare, one of our speakers disappearing from view. So uh, while we uh, wait for Isabel uh, to, to, to come back in, I'm sure my colleagues are, are dealing with that behind the scenes, 
I can see we've got loads of questions coming in. And one of them is one that I think is probably one Tim can have a crack at answering. Uh, but I suspect Isabel would politely uh, decline. And that's really about what it was a change of, of, of government. Because we know the Labour Party have uh, indicated that they would uh, reintroduce uh, the lifetime uh, allowance. And so there are, there are, there are questions uh, about that. Let me just sort of uh, find uh, one of them. So, uh, so uh, we've got one attendee uh, asking, uh, uh, could the tax be retrospective for people who take cash or pension in 2024 for any new government later this, this year? Uh, but perhaps, Tim, you might be able to comment on uh, uh, what you may have heard or what the uh, ramifications would be of a Labour government was to um, reintroduce the LTA. What can you comment on that? So, uh, you're right, James. When um, these changes were first announced, Labour did come out immediately and say that if they were in government, they, they wouldn't be abolishing the lifetime allowance. Um, and as far as I know, that is still their position. And therefore, there is a chance that we could uh, see the LTA or a similar regime reintroduced should we have a change of government uh, later this year or, or early next. Uh, my sense is that would take some time for them to do. Uh, I know LCP have produced a paper which analyzes what it would take to kind of yeah. put, put the position back to where we are now. Um, there's also the open question of whether they actually, when they look at it in government, would, would they still go through with that? But but it's certainly something people need to be alive to and aware of when they're thinking about these changes. OK, thanks. Thanks, Tim. That's helpful. I'm just going to see if it uh, looks like we've got Isabel uh, back online. Isabel, if you could unmute. It looks like you're back with us. Yeah, you do have me back. Apologies for that. It uh, just all shut down. I'm not quite sure why, but can you hear me clearly now? Perfectly, yeah. Why don't you, you, you crack on? Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. And, and apologies, uh, everyone, for that. So um, I think where I was, uh, was explaining how we're going to make the further legislative changes that are going to be required to make sure that some of what we published as part of finance bill, which doesn't operate as intended, does from April. Uh, so we took two powers in finance bill to enable us to amend that primary legislation via regulations which will be introduced ahead of April in time for the new tax year. Um, the, thank you. Um, that mostly covers uh, the pension commencement excess lump sum and reportable event 24. We do understand the challenges to timelines that that poses from industry. And whilst the government have been clear that they will be abolishing the LTA from April 24. They've also been clear that we should be doing whatever we can to support you to get ready for that change. Um, I've put some of our key resources on the screen. We are working through all queries that we receive into the pensions inbox and providing fortnightly updates via our regular pension schemes newsletter, which is available on gov.uk and the link is on the screen, um, as well as uh, LTA guidance specific newsletters, which were published on the same landing page, uh, but don't include other pensions tax matters. Um, I have, yeah, as I said, put the links on the screen and we'll also just flag that we have two working groups where we can go into further detail on some of these changes. They're on the transitional arrangements and the reporting requirements on the 8th and 14th of February, respectively. Um, invites have gone out for the former, but if people do want to sign up, um, they can still email the pensions policy inbox and we can get the link to you. And we're also working to get early guidance, uh, that's draft guidance of the pensions tax manual, which will be published fully after Royal Assent of the Finance Bill. Um, but to get draft guidance to you earlier uh, than that, we're looking at the moment at the latter half of February on the priority areas which we've identified following um, industry feedback. Um, apologies for the tech challenges there, and I appreciate that's being quite a broad overview, but if um, we have some time still for initial questions. Oh, Very helpful now. broad overview, Isabel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, gets us off to a, a great start. It seems a load of questions coming in. Can I just sort of, sort of double check one point about, about the regulations, as well? Because I've heard some sort of slightly contradictory uh, signals and mood music on, on, on this. So, so you, you said that any um, uh, further changes that need to be made to adjust uh, the legislation will be made, made through regulations. Can you just sort of go over again what the what the timing of that would be and when that would be sort of finished and completely clarified. Yeah. 
So we we can't um, lay those regulations um, until we've got royal assent of the finance bill. Um, they will be laid um, in time for them to become effective from the 6th of April 2024. We're looking currently at laying those in early March yeah. uh, when yeah. we expect yeah. to have um, got, right. we should have got royal assent of, of the finance right. bill. So it's quick work, quick work, lots to do with short, short times here. Fine. Thank you. Uh, let's have a couple of questions that are coming in. Uh, as well. uh, the top one uh, is, or will there be standard format uh, for the transitional tax-free certificate? Can you comment on that? Will be a standard so format for transitional? Yep. So um, like the LTA or BCE certificates, we don't prescribe to schemes exactly how those should appear. Um, appreciate that different schemes will have different systems, um, different guidance that they might want to provide to members along with the statements. Um, but the legislation in part six of the finance bill does set out what should be included in that certificate. It just doesn't prescribe um, a set for. Yeah. Okay, I think that's that's fine. And let's just have one more uh, question. Uh, yeah, I can still hear you. I can yeah, still hear fine, you, James. Yeah, that's super. Text not playing a complete ball today. Um, and let's have another question uh, as well. Will the LSA be index linked and increase um, uh, as the previous LTA has been before being frozen until 2026? So will the LSA be index linked and increase? Do you want me to come in on that one, James? Yeah, by all means, Tim. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, so the short answer is no. Uh, they're they're set out in the legislation as fixed amounts, um, and so so they won't okay. be uh, index linked. Um, clearly, there would be scope for future governments to increase them moving forward if they were minded to, um, in the same way that they they change the lifetime allowance. Um, but, but there is a provision in the legislation for that. Okay, Tim, you've got a few sh slides to share with us about the legal and practical issue. Let's crack on with that. Thank you. Yeah, so if we could move on to my first slide. I'm just going to be looking through, as James said, some of the legal and practical issues that schemes need to be thinking about and actions they need to take um, in the run-up to 6 April. Uh, I've set out some of the key uh, actions here. Uh, so firstly, uh, to the extent schemes haven't done so already, uh, clearly you need to be thinking about what needs to change in terms of your admin systems and processes. Um, now, this might be something that you handle in-house, in which case you're in control of updating that, or it may be that you're reliant on a third-party administrator uh, to do this for you. Again, if you haven't had conversations with them about what they're doing to implement these changes, then it's important that you have those conversations as soon as possible and also understand the timelines for any changes that are being implemented. Um, a few areas in particular to think about in terms of admin um, are clearly uh, you need to take steps to ensure that the new rules uh, and the correct tax treatment is applied from the 6th of April 2024. Um, some of the conditions related to payment of some lump sums are changing. For example, as, as you would imagine at the moment where there's a condition related to someone having lifetime allowance available, that's changing to refer to the new allowances. And, and schemes will clearly need to be in a position where they're able to calculate how much of those new allowances somebody has available at the relevant time, taking account of the transitional calculations uh, that, that Isabel has already mentioned. In order to do that, there will be new and additional information that schemes will need to obtain from members before certain benefits can be paid, in particular finding out how much tax-free cash the members previously received, uh, both pre and post 6th of April 2024. Um, so member communications going out when somebody requests benefits are put into payment will clearly need to reflect those new information requirements. The other question around administration uh, is whether or not your scheme will offer the new pension commencement excess lump sum. A, a, a real challenge for schemes at the moment is the fact we, we don't know exactly where the rules are going to land on this. Um, so I know some schemes 
um, are not planning to offer it, certainly not immediately after 6 April 2024, but that's a decision that schemes need to take. As well as updating admin processes, there also needs to be a review of scheme rules and they may need to be updated uh, in advance of 6 April uh, to address any issues caused by the changes. Uh, particular areas to look out for eligibility criteria. So for example, some schemes uh, exclude members who already exceed the LTA or have got some form of lifetime allowance protection, uh, query whether that's still necessary post 6 April this year. Uh, benefit caps is really important. So some schemes that we're looking at contain uh, caps on members' benefits by reference to the lifetime allowance. Uh, they come in a variety of different forms. Um, but clearly a key question is, will those benefit caps continue to apply after the 6th of April this year? And if not, do you want to take action or need to take action before that date in order to maintain the status quo? Uh, because it, it's likely it won't be possible to reinstate them after the 6th of April this year if they fall away inadvertently. And also schemes need to think about whether they have the power to pay a pension commencement excess lump sum. So if you decide that you will or you want to pay this once the rules become clear, um, you, you will need to check that you have the power to do that under your rules and that power may need to be inserted in, in some cases. And finally, there's also a need to update member communications clearly to remove uh, existing references to things like lifetime allowance and to make sure members are aware uh, of the key features of the new regime. If we can move on to my next slide. Uh, this is just highlighting a few tricky issues to be aware of and, and to, to be thinking about just to put on your radar. Um, first one is members approaching retirement uh, in, in the kind of run up to 6 April. Or, or shortly after 6 April 2024, because in some circumstances, it may be that their benefit options change after the 6th of April. So for example, somebody who currently uh, has benefits in excess of the lifetime allowance, in most instances, it's likely they will be able to take their excess benefits as a lump sum in the form of a lifetime allowance excess lump sum. However, subject to where we land on the final rules for the new pension commencement excess lump sum, they may find that they're no longer able to take all of their excess benefits as a lump sum after the 6th of April. Now, if you're issuing benefit statements now to, to members in that position, quoting the value of a, a lump, excess lump sum that they could take now, is it clear to them or do you need to make it clear that if they don't exercise that option by the 6th of April, they might lose that flexibility? So thought needs to be given to communications going out to members, particularly who are approaching retirement, both pre and, and shortly after 6 April. Um, Isabel's already touched on the transitional tax-free amount certificates. I think these are causing concern among schemes, particularly because a member will be able to apply to any scheme of which they are a member for a certificate, but that certificate potentially might need to cover tax-free sums received from other schemes. So. Schemes need to decide how they're going to handle that and how they're going to deal with those requests and also what evidence they would want members to provide in order to be able to verify or certify tax free sums received from other schemes. And finally, I just want to mention top up arrangements. I think primarily this is an issue for employers, um, but where employers have top up arrangements in place for individuals who currently exceed the lifetime allowance or have lifetime allowance protection, they need to think about how these changes might impact those top-up arrangements. Are those top-up arrangements still needed? Uh, that's a question that a number of employers are asking. And then also care needs to be taken about the interaction between the top-up arrangements and the, the, the main pension scheme itself, particularly where you've got benefit caps under the scheme, because what you don't want to do is be in a position where somebody could potentially get double recovery after the 6th of April uh, under the top up arrangement, but also under the main scheme, if those benefit caps inadvertently uh, are, are disapplied. That's all I had to cover, James. So happy to take questions on, on that or any other points. Absolutely, Tim. Thank you. Really helpful. And uh, as you can see, we've got stacks of, of, of questions. Uh, I think these are mostly for you. One or two might be for Isabel. So if you would like to jump in, uh, that would be fine. Uh, top one from Tim Steele, very short. What happens at age? 75. Can you comment on that, Tim? 
So currently at age 75, there are a number of of benefit crystallization events where somebody continues to have unused or uncrystallized uh, benefits. Um, But those those benefit crystallization events will fall away on the 6th of April 2024. So benefits will no longer need to be automatically tested at age 75. That said, again, it comes back to kind of the review of scheme rules. Something we're, we're finding is very common in scheme rules is that they've hard-coded a number of kind of age 75 restrictions and provisions in the rules, such as requiring pensions to come into payment or ceasing accrual at age 75. And and a number of schemes are looking at those afresh, um, given that there will no longer be a kind of automatic benefit crystallization event at that age. You're on mute, James. Very good one. Um, Let's take one from Owen. Hewlett to ask what is the policy intention for members who've used up their uh, ILSA in terms of the form of benefits that can be taken from DB schemes? Is it all pension or can you take all as cash or is it still 25% to get scheme rules but the cash is just taxed at marginal rate? That seems a, that's quite a complex question to me Tim but I'm hoping you can disentangle it. But I think it's Hopefully one Isabel can come in on because it, it really, I think, goes yeah. to the design and the rules for the new excess lump sum. So if Isabel's there. Yeah, yeah. I Let's bring her in. Um, hopefully, hopefully you can hear me. I'm going to keep my camera off in the hopes that it's going to help with the audio quality. Um, so we published legislation at LDA on the pension commencement lump sum, um, which said that you would be able to take a pension commencement lump sum in excess of your lump sum allowance and that that excess would be taxed at marginal rate. I think that was one of the key concerns with the draft legislation published for consultation um, around an unintended expansion of flexibilities, particularly for DB schemes. So the approach we then took under finance bill uh, was to return to the limits on a PCLS, uh, which currently exists. So when you crystallize your uh, pension benefits, you can take the lesser of 25% of those benefits and 25% at the moment of your remaining LTA, um, it will be your remaining allowances. We then understand that there are individuals who currently have an entitlement to commence, uh, sorry, to commute more of their pension on commencement of their pension as a lump sum. And to ensure that they can continue to do that, we introduced the pension commencement excess lump sum. That's a new authorised lump sum under Finance Act 2004, uh, which would allow individuals who've exhausted their allowance to, uh, in connection with the commencement of a pension, uh, take a lump sum, commute more of that to a lump sum. Um, We do understand that there are issues with the operation of the permitted maximum, which was placed on that lump sum. We are looking at that at the moment. And as soon as we can confirm um, the final uh, design of that lump sum, we will be issuing further guidance. I appreciate um, that people probably want that now. Um, That has gone to ministers. So we hope to be able to communicate that to you as soon as possible. Um, And thank you to everyone who has engaged on that already. Uh, in their feedback Super. on the finance bill. Thanks very, very much, Isabel. That's, that's great. And, uh, and and I know my, my colleagues in our policy team have been uh, in, engaging with you uh, as well. And incidentally, I should just mention, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, probably should have mentioned at the start, but my colleague, Geordie Skilbeck, in our policy team, who's been doing a lot of work with Isabel, uh, is very happy to uh, be a point of contact here for follow-up questions. And we'll put Geordie's um, uh, email and contact details in the, in the follow-up. And we can probably put it in the... In the chat, in fact, I think it's just gone in the chat right now. So, uh, so Jordan is a helpful point to contact that. Let's let's crack through as many of these questions as we can in the time uh, remaining. And apologies by the way for the sound quality. I put the headset on to see if that makes uh, makes for an improvement. Um, uh, Linda Decent asks: uh, Is life assurance in the registered trust included in this? Tim, that sounds like perhaps one for you. Um. I think the short answer is yes, uh, under a registered scheme, uh, it, it would be. Again, we've got uh, schemes and, and employers looking at accepted group life schemes and whether they uh, are still necessary uh, under the under the new new arrangement. But uh, my understanding is that that um, benefits under a registered scheme would be called, contrary to anything Isabel might 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 say. 
No, yeah, the tax-free amounts of, of benefits under registered pension schemes yeah. will be caught. If you've got a particular question um, around particular benefits, then I'm happy to take that off, off this call if you um, want to email the pensions inbox and we can come back more substantively on that. Thanks, Isabel, really helpful, that's great. Um, and ne next one, uh, just with £268,275 act as a hard stop for schemes that offer commutation with any amount that would exceed the requiring commutation into pension or subject to scheme rules. Uh, does it allow the commutation beyond this level with the excess amount taxable? I'm not sure as a non-tax expert, I quite follow that. I'm just looking at uh, Tim and Isabel to see um, uh, if, there's a, if there's a nod of recognition and understanding. I can Tim, take that one if that one. Oh, I can take that yes, one if that's helpful. Um, so the 268275 acts as a hard stop for PCLS, for the pension okay. commencement lump sum, um, and less if 25% of your benefits are less than that amount. Um, 268275, as I said before, with the allowances is adjusted up if you've got a protection. For the uncrystallized funds pension lump sum, you will be able to take that in excess of the lump sum allowance, uh, 268275, but that excess will be taxed at marginal rate. Tim, did you want to add anything? anything further? No? No, I think I think it, the, just drawing out perhaps the point that Isabel made that where people have lifetime allowance protections, and, and there are certain other circumstances where that 268275 figure may be enhanced. Um, but yep. generally, that, that would be a hard stop for PCLS. Okay. Uh, Isabel, I think this is uh, one for you. Uh, I'm not sure we've got a name on this question. It's one of those anonymous ones. But the question is I know you've said in advance of April of a PCELS, but the industry needs the time to be able to build the changes into platforms and outputs. And I must say, I've been hearing quite a bit of this from, from our members, of course. How will HMRC support providers in making these changes and in providing dispensation if we can't make the changes in time? What's your view on that? Yeah, so um, aware that publishing the or introducing the regulations um, in, in March poses a particularly tight timeline for schemes. Um, as I said, we've, we've had a clear steer from ministers that we're to do whatever we can to help industry get ready. So it's not that we won't be able to communicate the detail of those changes in advance of March. The regulations will be laid. Um, we're looking at the moment early March. Um, as soon as we are able to communicate the detail of the changes, we'll be able to do that in advance of March. So um, that is also one of the areas, the pension commencement excess lump sum, where we're looking to get early uh, guidance to schemes um whether that be through draft um, pensions tax manual guidance um or through the newsletter um, and we hope to be able to do that this month thanks isabel and of course we're, we're very happy um at the plsa to sort of help with that communication pro process to the industry you know we've got our policy watch uh bulletin uh, and other channels out to members so as well if we can sort of help to amplify that message or uh, channel questions back to you uh, then, then let's see what we can do to collaborate on. Um, let's uh, move on to one or two more questions. So Adam Sykes asks, someone has already used 100% uh, of LTA, are they allowed to take a lump sum up to 268275 tax-free now, please? Uh, Isabel, I think that's, that's you and maybe Tim also. I'm, I'm assuming by now we're meaning we're meaning under the new rules. Um, so if someone's used up 100% of their lifetime allowance under the LTA, um, then the standard calculation, which I mentioned earlier for the transitional arrangements, will mean that they have no allowances left from, or no new allowance, none of the new allowances left from the 6th of April, 2024. That's because members who've used up 100% of their LTA have no current expectation for further tax-free benefits or tax fee lump sums, um, they will be able to apply for a transitional tax-free amount certificate if they can evidence that that 100% of LTA used was not taken as a tax-free lump sum. So if they didn't take their 25% uh, tax-free cash, um, in inverted commas, so their pension commencement lump sum, if they only took 10% and they have the evidence for that and they can apply for the certificate um, and they will be able to have that reflected um, in their available allowance from the 6th of April. 
Tim, any comment? No, um, I, I think that's clear. Yep. Thank you very much. That's great. Um, let's uh, take a few, few, few more. Um, uh, Tim, this is probably more for you. We maybe kind of covered this earlier, but let, let's let's see if there's a, a, an extra angle to it. Could tax be retrospective for people who take cash stroke pension in 2024 before any new government later uh, that year? Um, I hope not. Um, <laughs> I, I, certainly, I certainly wouldn't expect it to be. I mean, I, as a matter of principle and policy, uh, I, I think a government would be very hard pressed, the new government, to uh, introduce legislation that, that retrospectively uh, imposed tax charges on individuals that, that took yeah. decisions based on the, the, the legislation as it stood at the relevant time. Um, so therefore, to the extent a Labour government did seek to reintroduce the LTA or a similar regime, hopefully uh, we would anticipate yeah. there would be suitable transitional arrangements built into that um, to kind of respect what people had done in the meantime. Yeah, and I think that comes to the next question as well. If I, from Andrew Hackley, if I crystallise all my benefits in an excessive LTA, I assume that any reversal of the LTA, LTA charge will not be retrospective. I mean, it's basically the same question. I think, yeah, okay, fine. Um, uh, let's see. Um, another of our anonymous attendees, and let's try to make sure that this sy the system puts everyone's name. It's much more interesting if we know who the question is coming from. But anyway, the question. Uh, is do members need a transitional certificate from each registered pension scheme uh, of which they are a member? I know this is one of those sort of ticklish questions that's been coming up a lot in discussions uh, that I've been hearing uh, from our members. Isabel, can you give us some guidance on that? Yeah, I can take that one. Um, so no uh, short answers member won't a member won't require a transitional tax-free amount certificate if they choose to apply for one. Again, we don't expect the majority of members to apply um, from every pension scheme of which they were a member, but the certificate will need to reflect the pension benefits taken from um, any pension scheme of which they're a member and where they've taken benefits prior to April 2024. Right. So does that mean, uh, and again, I'm not an expert, does that mean that for scheme A, we'll need to liaise with other schemes and get information from them, which sounds like a bit of a no, communication no, it will be challenge. No, um, we don't expect schemes to need to be able to communicate with each other. It will be um, the onus is on the member to provide the evidence. So if the member wants to go to their other schemes um, and ask how much they took in X date between 2006 and 2024, then that's for the member to do. That's not that's not an expectation uh, for the scheme issuing the certificate to communicate with any of the members of the pension schemes. Mm -hmm. Fine, thanks, thanks. Tim, I think Isabel's covered that one. Unless anything you need yeah, to add, can I just ask a follow up question, which is sure. just to Isabel, put put you on the spot as well. In, in the latest newsletter, um, the, the guidance talks about a member having to apply to the first scheme from which they get a lump sum after the sixth of April. Uh, whereas I think many people read the legislation as saying a member could apply to any scheme and just wondered if you could just clarify the position on that. Yeah, definitely. And um, thanks, Tim. So that was an error in the newsletter and apologies for that. We are looking to get that updated, um, but it takes a short while to get those changes live on gov.uk. Um, there will be further clarification provided at this week's working group and in the newsletter, which should be going live on Monday the 12th. Um, so members will be able to apply to any registered pension scheme of which they're a member. The reason for that being, whilst we expect, and we will clarify in guidance, that most members will go to the scheme which is paying the benefit for which that certificate is relevant. So the scheme from which they're um, receiving their first lump sum, that's a relevant BCE post April, it might be more suitable for some members to go to another scheme, for instance, if they've crystallised most of their pension benefits under that scheme. Thanks, Isabel. That's great. Let's uh, squeeze in just a couple more questions before we have to, to wrap up. Um, uh, this one is, how will those with any form of protection uh, be impacted or, or affected? Isabel? Uh, so members with protection shouldn't be impacted differently to those who don't have any lump sum protection or yep. uh, lifetime allowance protection. Uh, the changes to where those protections sit in the legislation essentially ensure that any increase it gave you to your entitlement to a pension commencement lump sum or to uh, the lifetime allowance overall 
are reflected in the increases it will give you to the lump sum allowance and to the lump sum and death benefit allowance moving forward. Fine, thank you. Um, and I think we've got time for one more, if I can just find it, from Matthew Williams, yes, who says, uh, currently legislation mentions that for trivial commutations, the value of the pension is tested. However, based on the guidance going forward, it would be four times the lump sum. The member did not opt for a lump sum. How would this be tested? Just see who wants to grab that one first. Isabel and Tim. Yeah, no, sorry, Tim, did you want to take? No, happy for you to say that one as well. Um, so there have been changes to the calculation for the trivial commutation lump sum. They are largely consequential changes for where it referenced um, bits of the legislation that won't exist from the 6th of April 2024, and it seeks to achieve the same outcome as under the LTA. I'm not sure I've followed all the detail of that question, though, so if, if they want to put their yeah. thoughts um, or query into writing and send that to us, then we can have a further look at that. Uh, ab absolutely, and I think it was Matthew who asked that question. So, uh, if, if you want to pin that into to Geordie or me here at the PLSA, we can uh, uh, transmit it straight on to, to Isabel if that just smooths the process. But we're, we're, we're nearly out of out of time, uh, so uh, uh, I'm going to draw it to a close there. Uh, I must say, I'm conscious, very conscious, uh, we've had some sound problems uh, today, which obviously isn't really satisfactory uh, at all. So, apologies uh, for that. We'll go away and investigate and. And see what we can do differently next time. Um, uh, the recording, the slides mentioned, will be uh, circulated. Uh, I'm still going to through all the questions. There were a lot of them. So we'll see, uh, just, we'll just have a look at what we can do to see if any further point to cover off uh, by way of follow up material. Um, uh, and as I mentioned, my colleague, Jordi Skilbeck, is very happy to be your into contact in our policy team and his email address. Uh, will be in the follow-up. Um, I'd just like to thank my colleagues uh, who are unseen behind the scene, uh, Molly Mayo and, and Holly Webber, who are sort of pushing the buttons and making sure it all go, go, goes according to plan and getting the slides up and down. So thank you uh, to them. But most uh, particularly, thank you to Isabel uh, for your, your being so sort of open and willing to engage with the industry, answer questions, uh, not an easy challenge, so much appreciated. And Tim, thank you also uh, to you uh, for all you've done to, to clarify issues and for your, for your time. Uh, and thanks very much to the 300 plus people uh, who've dialed in this morning. It's been great to have you uh, online and we we'll look forward to seeing you uh, at our next bit. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs>